Hey there, folks. So, I have a quick story to tell you, and I, I've kind of done a video on this before, but I don't know. I, I think a little bit more show and tell is a little bit appropriate to, to really reinforce what I'm trying to say. Anyway, for some background, let's take a look at this 2DS I have here. Now, this is, oopsie doodle. This is one of those um, limited edition ones, came out a little while back for the release of the red and blue virtual console titles, I think. I don't know, doesn't matter, uh, not too relevant. I bought this thing in 2017 from Goodwill. Um, that was a thrift shop, uh, for those that aren't familiar, and for those that also aren't familiar, items from thrift shops can be kinda disgusting. Uh, so, what I did when I bought this, first thing I did was I cleaned it. Now, back in late 2017, uh, looks like I purchased it October 19, so I probably got it by November. Uh, like I said, basically the first thing I did was clean it. Let's, uh, let's take a look at it now. Of course, it still works perfectly fine, but I made a mistake. You see these spots on the screen? It's kind of hard to see. Uh, let's see if we can... Oh, nope. Brightness is already cranked, so that won't help. Um, right there. You see one right there, one right there. It's kind of hard to see, but they're there. Anyway, I have done what I, I fear a lot of people who don't know any better do. And I used isopropyl alcohol, and I just cleaned the entire thing. I had this thing apart. Um, cleaned literally every single component, including all the buttons, because they were pretty sticky and gross. Works perfectly fine now, except for this one. I never bothered fixing it. Here, it's clicky, but it's not the right clicky. That's what it's supposed to be like. But anyway, doesn't matter. See those spots? Like I said, I did this in 2017. You see, it still hasn't completely cleared up. I got liquid inside the screen, and that's what those spots are. Um... I see this all the time. People just use isopropyl alcohol over their console like it's some magic cure-all. It's not. Please don't. Isopropyl alcohol and any other uh, cleaning solutions you might use are for spot cleaning only. Don't just slather it over the whole thing and call it good. 2017. It is currently November 2021. Four solid years and it still hasn't cleaned up. Why did this get damaged? because of a property called capillary action. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and try and explain the science behind it, but basically, let me try and explain the science behind it. <laughs> when you have two or more layers pressed very tightly up against each other, like these two bags, for example, dip them in something, you might find that liquids will find their way in and soak between the layers. Now, these aren't really close enough to demonstrate Oh, there we go. Look at that. See? Liquid just seeps its way in. And there it stays. Uh, liquid has a very hard time evaporating when it's in between two layers, and it's not exposed to air. Um, now, a lot of the time, isopropyl alcohol is used to clean electronics because the alcohol content makes it evaporate faster. That does not mean it's safe to use on electronics. It just means that because it evaporates faster, it's easier to clean up. Water is just as safe to use on electronics as isopropyl alcohol is, assuming your electronics are off. I'm gonna be doing a little live demo with electronics that are on. We're gonna take this screen here, get a little dipper rooney Let's see how long it takes for this thing to get ruined. I'm just gonna stick the corner in mostly because this whole thing doesn't really fit in there. Uh, but while that's going, let me uh, try and set this down here. There we go. And let us talk about why this happens. Uh, let me find my screen that I set aside. You see it's starting to trigger touch sensor. Is that one of the, yeah. That'll do. So I've got another screen here. Brand new, never used. No, I'm kidding. Uh, this one has a ripped ribbon. Unfortunately, sometimes things happen. Uh, but anyway, a lot of people don't seem to understand this, but screens themselves are made of a lot of fine layers. So if we peel this back here, look at that, there's one layer. And I don't think I'm going to get any further. This seems pretty 
well constructed. I've taken apart another screen before. Um, I did a DS, yeah, original DS screen. I, I pulled one of those bad boys apart. And you can see the layers in there. It's not too complicated. Um, these layers just make up the backlight diffuser because at the bottom here we have all these LEDs that are shining up through these layers and these layers act as a diffuser so that you don't get bright spots along the bottom. You notice the lighting on that is pretty even. Um, move those touch sensors so they stop freaking out so much on me. They're going to do that anyway because I'm touching them. But anyway, this is a really bad example with how tight these layers are. I can't even get them apart. And I can't twist this either because this is like a, uh, this is a glass lens. Here we go. Got one of the layers up. Another layer. Another layer. Oh look, another layer. And I think this is the last one. This feels like the back. So there you go. Way more than two layers. That's more than enough for a capillary action. And of course, my live demo is not going quite as planned. I guess you'll have to take my word for it. Um, maybe if I abuse this thing a little bit more, you can see it's already been quite abused. I'm afraid to stick it too deep in because this is a perfectly working backlight kit aside from the LCD itself. But the idea is, like I said, isopropyl alcohol should only ever be used to spot clean. But if you're trying to clean a screen, take a cloth. Just rub it on the screen. If that doesn't do the trick, apply a little bit of your solvent to the cloth itself and then try cleaning the screen. You don't want anything that can drip in there. As soon as you start dripping in there, you're looking for trouble. Speaking of, let's see if we can't accelerate this a little bit. Let me get that wet and just rub it along the sides. Oh, you know why this one is being so stubborn? This one has some insulation on the back. I didn't think about that. So the edges might be all sealed up. I'm just going to peel that back just a little bit. What an awful demo, am I right? Well, the same thing can happen to literally any screen. Uh, the 9380s that are used in um, the, the older backlight mods or the Game Boy Advance mods, um, AGS-101 screens. I actually ruined an AGS-101 about a week ago when I tried laminating it. The OCA seeped into the layers and it's, it's done. I can't really recover from that. Um, the single only screens that don't have layers that you have to seep into are screens that don't have a backlight. All these layers are, these just serve to diffuse the backlight layer. If you don't have a backlight, then there's nothing to diffuse and you have nothing to worry about. That doesn't mean you should just, you know, put them in water, but we'll, we'll find another screen that'll, uh, my example here. I think I've got a few to sample. Um, I guess we'll let that soak and I'll be right back. Not having any luck ruining the screen, go figure. Let's, uh, let's cheat a little. I'm gonna get a little bit daring and dip the wrong end in. See if we can't speed things up a little. Now again, this is the exact opposite thing you want to do to a uh, to a screen you want to use or a console you care about, but it's in the name of science, right? It also probably doesn't help that I'm just using regular tap water to try and prove my point. Isopropyl alcohol is a little bit less viscous than uh, tap water in my experience. 
partly because of the much quicker evaporation. Um, that tends to seep in a little bit better. But I'm just not having any luck, am I? Maybe I should submerge the whole Jesus thing, huh? Here we go. I should have known with how hard I had, how hard a time I had trying to rip this thing apart that I'd have a hard time getting water intrusion. Um, but look at that. Top, middle. I can work that all the way down if I want. And that is not going away. If you have a screen that looks something like that, chances are you were cleaning something with a little bit more liquid than you should have. And there you go. I mean, the screen's not ruined. I mean, it is ruined, but for other reasons. Um, this particular problem is just the backlight. If you can live with it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's still gonna work. You're just always gonna have that staining. That's it. Anyway, it's probably starting to fail because of the severe amount of water I got into it. So let me switch that off because I want to reuse that kit. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. This is that's why you don't clean stuff like that. Um, honorable mention, let's look at this Game Boy Color here. I'm going to... Pull that off, we're done with that. Same thing applies to the Game Boy Color. You get liquid inside of an enclosed area like a power switch, it's not going to want to evaporate. You get liquid under an enclosed area like the CPU, there is space between the chip and the board itself, as evidenced by these holes back here. You can these all go back to the back of the chip. Anyway, whoop. you get liquid back there. It's not it's not going to evaporate quickly. That is a good way to get corrosion, especially if you're, you know, vigorously scrubbing down your board. You get liquid back there. You think you're clean. Flip it over, put batteries in, try to boot it up. That's how you get water damage. That's how you get corrosion. I'm not saying don't use isopropyl alcohol to clean your boards. What I am saying is... If you use isopropyl alcohol, you need to make sure you give it the appropriate time to evaporate. Uh, in some cases, you can evade that, uh, aid that evaporation by baking the board in a reflow oven. It's probably not the best choice for a Game Boy Color since these connectors and the volume wheel and headphone jack and DC board, th those are all only rated for like one or two trips through the reflow oven. Uh, and they've already had two trips through the reflow oven, so you'll probably ruin it. The best thing to do is just leave it for a little while. And while we're at it, rice does nothing. Stop putting your wet consoles, phones, whatever. Don't put it in rice. Check the description. There's more info down there. Uh, that's all confirmation bias. That never actually does anything aside from... Um, introduce a rice flavor to your electronics but yeah so if you're getting it in the power switch I know a lot of other youtubers recommend the drip and wiggle method don't do that don't don't do that if, if you're not gonna take it apart to clean it just give it a dry wiggle anyway don't put liquid in there ta-da that'll work just as well as the drip and wiggle and you won't have liquid trapped in your switch that'll cause water damage down the line. Um, same thing with the Game Boy Advance. There's a physical switch within the cart slot that detects if you inserted a Game Boy Color versus a Game Boy Advance game based off of the notches in the corner. That's what these are for. They actuate a physical switch. You don't want liquid in that either. There's lots of things you don't want liquid in, so again, 15 minutes of, of me ruining electronics just to say stop drowning your boards in solvents. Just, if you're going to use them, that's fine. But spot clean. We just spot cleaning. We're not doing anything more. Just spot cleaning. And now because I just used 
the liquid on this thing. Generous amount of liquid too, and it, I'm sure it went in those vias. I gotta wait for this to evaporate before I can power this board again. Or I gotta bake it, but since I don't have a reflow oven, I'm just gonna wait for it to evaporate. I don't think that'll be a problem. I have plenty of donor boards in the meantime, but that's not supposed to come out. But anyway, I I hope this doesn't come off as, as me like trying to gatekeep or say, you know, don't do this. If you do this, you're bad. No, 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 no. Just don't do it because you'll probably ruin your electronics and that's not good for them. I don't. I, I don't want you to ruin electronics any more than you want to ruin your electronics. It's just... N now you know. The more you know, the better you can do. Alright? Thanks for watching, guys. Sorry for rambling so long.